Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our another session, uh, sharing few views uh, from Ayurvedic perspective on certain uh, aspect. And today's uh, topic we have taken up uh, as food as medicine. Is it achievable? Is it really can be done? So when question come around that, And the reason why this question comes up, because as I mentioned and shared many times, that everyone nowadays is very, very keen and becoming more aware than before about their well-being. And whenever we talk about well-being, nutrition subject always come as a part of discussion. In spite of various other ways of well-being, people always feel nutrition can play in a huge role. And especially the time which is going presently, has compelled all of us to sit and uh, seriously give more consideration about our wellness. And in that respect, food, what we eat, is being considered by many of us in a way that, is it really helpful for me? And when I talk about food as medicine, this is not a new subject. Ages ago, this has been always in a consideration, even though in that times, people's diet were more balanced and more better than what we have today. Even if we talk about the father of our modern medicine, Hippocrates, he has also made it very clear and his line has been actually more popular than anything that let's thy make our food as medicine. And taking leave from there, our present modern scientist has invented and tried to give us various kind of diets. Whether you take it at Kinson diet, high protein diet, low carb diet or low sugar diet and green leafy diet or paleo diet or so many diets are there. And when we look around that what these diets has given us, don't take me wrong that I am here to criticize these things. These are all good in their own ways, but question comes up. Let's review them. Let's uh, talk about them. Now, even if we look at that, this high protein diet, which has been around with us for a long time, and it is still workable and people follow that. And uh, especially in the weight management and other things. But does, does it has uh, given us uh, that people are not obese? And then in a diet where people always think that low fat diet will save me from heart attack and uh, cholesterol, does that really given us any outcome? If we look at the stats, in fact, people who are eating more and more raw veggies or those kind of uh, food, or no fat at all, 
their cholesterol is more higher than a normal person. And same is with these uh, high protein diets or other aspects are there. So one wonder that what where the gaps are. Gaps are simple. And that is where this science which we are talking today, Ayurvedic medicine, one of the oldest ancient system of medicine has given very clear answer. Whether someone accept it or not accept it, that's a different ballgame. But the reality is what Ayurveda talk about that your digestion, your food is not just related with that how much carb, how much protein, how much fat you are taking. But what is required is that how your food get metabolized in your system. And to that, one factor which I have taken last time is that food need to get metabolized and that food is metabolized by our digestive fire. Which again, there is no question even from the Western medicines or other aspects that they also feel that yes, food need to be metabolized. But then food need to be metabolized is just because that I have eaten and it will get metabolized. That is not the case. We have to give a lot of consideration that how I can make that food, that meal which I have made and now I'm ready to eat will be ultimately not just giving me nourishment or filling my tummy, but will act in a such a way that it can eliminate the toxins from my system, keep my bodily tissues in a much more healthy state and give me physical, mental and emotional satisfaction. That is how food consideration as medicine can come up. So to achieve that goal, Ayurveda have given us a lot of uh, consideration to think. And one of the major consideration is, as we all know, one size does not fit to everyone. This is, there is a saying side of thing, I'm not into that kind of thing. So what that mean? That each individual has a unique body makeup. You cannot just think that this particular food eaten by 10 people in a room will give them same kind of a nourishment. And that's where the catch comes up. So what that means is, if we are not able to keep the consideration of what body makeup you are and that body makeup is given to all of us at our birth time, then you have any more chances to make your food at some stage poison. Poison not in the sense of cyanides or kind of thing. Poison means your body will start producing more toxins or in simple terms we call it as an ama in our Ayurvedic Sanskrit language or free radical substances from the four Western medicines perspective. But then question is, someone might ask, okay, hang on, you're telling me that I need to know my body type. So what you are saying is that uh, those who don't know about their body type cannot really make their food as medicine. It's not the case. But it's one is hard way, one is easy way. So just taking a one example. If we have two friends and one know about his body constitution and one does not know about his body constitution and say they are both in the same age group and they eat their food, one eating according to his or her liking and the other one is eating according to his understanding of his body constitution and just presume 
they both are kafa dominant in their constitution when i say kafa what is kafa those who understand about ayurveda they know that there are three bodily intelligence which are governing our each function in our body and they are also responsible to give us one or the other dominance of our prakriti or body makeup and that constitution dominant people when they are eating their breakfast lunch and dinner with this understanding one is eating according to his liking one is eating according to his body makeup if you see these people after 6 or 7 years you will find that one person even at that stage when we started 5 years 6 year ago their body weight was reasonably same body mass muscles tones everything was all good but in those 5 6 year the situation has start changing the person who was eating according to his liking he's already start becoming a bit more chubby and if you ask him how he is keeping his health and well being he will say that it's all good even though i'm having an a bit of high cholesterol but i'm taking my medicine and trying to keep it under control i recently got an high blood pressure also uh, but i'm trying to keep it under control by taking medicine so you can see what and which way the things are moving and if you look at the other person he still look in the same state of his uh, body makeup and uh, still fit even though his body make constitution was also kafa so that's a one consideration that you need to look at uh, if you can understand that what you are selecting does it suits your bodily makeup or not then comes the second consideration which will be easy for us to talk about is your seasonal consideration when we talk about season i'm sure every one of us not for that you need the ayurvedic understanding there are four season if we talk about this part of our world and in each season there are different qualities which are dominant in that season and again from ayurvedic perspective one thing is very simple even not from ayurvedic perspective we all know that that we also have the same body constitutional qualities what pervading in the season so what that mean is if we are in a winter now i'm just giving you another example of that and if you see people around you what they eat without any consideration of season they will be eating cold damp moist food you go to these uh, all the shopping malls and people will be having an ice cream in their hand or cold coffee or other smoothies and all those kind of foods are always in a part of their day to day's uh, liking and what is that that is what we call as incompatible to the season so when we are eating without that consideration or in that sort of scenario how that food can become an a medicine no matter whether it is super organic ice cream or a super organic smoothie it will never give you that so that is another consideration then ayurveda talk about is one is compatibility incompatible combination consideration has become such a big part of our present days life that lead to the biggest biggest problem so when i say incompatible combination when you are combining different food which might not be good for your digestive fire or confuse your digestive fire what will happen that food even though your digestive fire might be in optimum state but if i'm keep feeding the body with those kind of uh, qualities it will lead to so simple example is look at the breakfast option what we have normally we have our cereals and on cereals we put uh, cold milk and then we might put on a little bit of banana and yogurt kind of combination that's an a staple kind of breakfast which we always take and nowadays uh, smoothies has come up in smoothies you have yogurt you have an a milk you have an a protein and you have your fruit and frozen food fruit and kind of things and 
that's what you go, go into the bullet or something like that kind of thing. So that's what majority of us uh, are having nowadays. So that's just in a one simple example of uh, incompatibility. And then the other consideration, what again becomes a little bit uh, difficult, but it's not that difficult if person is eating with a lot of awareness, is what is your state of Agni? Agni means that you are digestive fine. You can intuitively actually feel that how my appetite actually is if you are a little bit connected to your body. If you are off the track and trying to eat just for the sake of eating, it becomes difficult. But if you are aware, you can see whether I am really hungry or not. If I am not hungry, if I still want to eat something, I will make an, a choice that I just go for a light meal or something small amount. But if I am not making and not connecting to my bodily intelligence, I will just take my normal lunch or dinner or whatever I have and eat it. And what that will do, that will impact on my digestive fire. This is how the problem will start. When you are letting your bodily agni to work extra, one stage it will come up, it will start giving up. Giving up means it will not digest your food properly and will then produce more toxins, more ama and less nutrient. And that will not nourish your existing tissue and that's where the downfall starts. What downfall means? Your immune system will start getting compromised. And when the immune system starts getting compromised, things start getting into more and more trouble. Anything, surroundings will start affecting us more badly and we are then prone to one or the other ailments. So that's another consideration comes up. Then Ayurveda talk about the biggest part of how to make food as medicine is various way of eating our food which nowadays has become in a sort of uh, so guaranteed uh, thing that we can't even think of uh, if someone is not doing that way you can't imagine that why they are not doing that what are the few things i will just share with you one now just look at in Ayurvedic nutrition aspect, one thing we always talk about and then people, even our own student, they will always uh, frown and they always think, oh my goodness, this is just something, a cultural thing or kind of thing. When I say that uh, you should first of all wash your hand before you start taking your meal. Reason is, if you look at, uh, you might be working on the desk or you might be touching different books or files or something or even laptop and kind of thing or you might have shaked hand so much uh, things are around so you should watch underlying factor is that there are so many bacteria and viruses around us and once you start taking your burgers or other kind of things or six inch loaf you have taken with the wonderful veggies it means you are taking certain extra stuff inside but not many people think of but look at, nature has his own way to teach us. Nowadays, what has happened due to this COVID-19? Everyone want to wash their hand millions time in a day if they can. And then they have those sanitation uh, aspects to talk about and do that. What actually is? Why we are doing that? Because we feel that bacteria can go or virus can go in through our hand. If today we can think that way, why not in our normal life? That is where the one aspect to share with you that how we forget simple, simple things and make our life more difficult. One need to remember one thing, which again, our Western medicine is start accepting it very, very big. We are born with 25,000 genes right which determine our RNA and DNA factor but on top of that there are more than 2 million genes in our gut which are responsible for the healthy state of each human being at every level. Reason is 
what we do is we abuse our gut to the maximum. And when we abuse our gut to the maximum by feeding the body with a lot of incompatible food, wrong choices and wrong way of eating, it becomes very difficult how we can keep our food into an estate of medicine and it will actually rather than becoming a food as medicine start becoming more and more into a disease giving three meals a day sort of scenario. On other note if you look at considerations we always talk about you focus on your food. Why focus on your food? Reason is very simple because when you are eating you are passing in a message to your brain to get your stomach ready, to get your small intestines ready. But look at what we do nowadays. We have an, a specific kind of fashion that we, when we sit on dining table, either the TV will be on or our computer games will be on and something uh, or my laptop is on and I just still trying to check emails or consideration or discussions might be happening on the table on my uh, dining table so what that mean is that mean distraction and when the distraction comes up it is in a stop and start stop and start scenario of in relation to your eating part and when that stop and start aspect is happening you can do stop and start because it is your intellect you are controlling it but your bodily intelligence stop and start does not work once it start it has kicked in the digestion process it will keep doing the cooking it's not going to wait that because you have stopped i should now stop the secretion of those enzymes secretion of that hydrochloric acid and wait for next grass to come if it is nothing there it is going to cook us Cook us means cook our lining of our stomach and gut and lead to so many of our, uh, other ailments to us. So that's the simple, simple consideration. Then in Ayurveda, we always talk about don't eat and drink. What that means is you finish your meal. If you want to drink uh, some water, then wait for 10, 15 minutes, then drink. Or otherwise, if you are eating you can just sip one or two sip warm water during that time or otherwise you will be but look at nowadays not even water no one will drink the water anyway you always will see when you are having a dinner always there will be either organic juice bottles if some people are more aware or there will be in a co uh, different kind of these carbonated drinks i should not name it but those all carbonated drinks, whatever you are drinking will be there. Or sometime there will be some more super uh, aware people that they will go into having a more carbonated water. So what these things does, when you are having that uh, liquid or fluid along when you are eating, it is keep diluting your hydrochloric acid and enzyme what from Ayurvedic perspective we call as your digestive fire and when your digestive fire is diluted what will happen no matter how balanced food you have eaten it will not metabolize and when it does not metabolize what it going to give you nutrient from where that will happen it will produce more toxins and that will be the first level of the toxin and they will keep multiplying and lead to more and more complications so that's the where your simple simple considerations comes up and then look at uh, another habit which is in a part and parcel of our life we eat on run kind of thing which is obvious if you go and see sometime at lunch time just uh, if you have few offices in a complex kind of thing and around there is in a park you will see a lot of people have their lunch in their hand and keep uh, eating and then keep talking on the phone and keep moving and then they are eating as a kind of someone is after them to snatch their food so again what that do is that 
hamper your digestive process. Because when you are eating quickly, what happens? When you are just gulping around, not letting the food to get moist, that's the first stage of your digestion get affected. Then your stomach is not getting ready. Ready means not sufficient secretions are coming in your gut and can lead to more and more complications. So when that food will be sit going there in the stomach, will not get metabolized. And someone might think, hang on, what is the big deal? Enzymes can get released and food can get digested there. That's not the way it works. So food will sit in your stomach only for a certain time. It has to pass on to the second stage. Yeah. And then when the second stage happens in the small intestine, then that food, because it's not an already right amount of digestion has happened in the first stage, will not be able to get digested by those enzymes and will lead to further complications of producing more toxins and less nutrients. That is where these simple, simple considerations can make uh, our food as poison or food as a medicine. So it is not that it is not achievable. Making food as medicine is very easily achievable. Just enhancing our awareness that what we need to give the consideration, selection of the food. Yes, you must select right kind of good quality food. But then you need to give consideration how I prepare that food, how I eat that food, and then the environment surroundings around you when you are selecting and eating that food will play in a big role. So considerations are essential. Food always can become medicine when you give right ingredient to that. I'm not talking about the turmeric and ginger and other things to make your food because I'm not here to give you that aspect of how you can make the food as medicine. But I'm just giving you very simple lifestyle related factor, which are common sense related factor and has been taken away from us in our present day's life and has made us more vulnerable that even though you might have a very good dish, in front of you but our habits our ways of eating that food can lead to more and more into trouble and on top of that if we go a little bit more further there are certain principles in Ayurveda we talk about that how you prepare your dish so that is where you, it comes up the consideration of a preparation so for example you are preparing your breakfast now in the morning and most of us, if we are eating, say, porridge and uh, trying to eat uh, even oat and uh, other kind of things or even buckwheat flour we want to make and a porridge with or some other thing, what we do is we will soak them overnight in water and in the morning we just uh, will either add more yogurt on that and some nuts and uh, seeds and eat that porridge. Or if some of us... Uh, might be a little bit more uh, traditional and trying to cook in a more different way. They might uh, have the porridge, this oat and cook with the water and milk and then have that porridge. And what happened with them, just observe those people. When they have taken their breakfast around about uh, 10, 9.30, or 11, they will start feeling already sluggish, a bit heavy, no energy. And then they start looking for in a cup of coffee or some smoke just to give them in a kick. And reason why is that? Because your grains are heavy. And when you have mixed them with now water or yogurt or cold milk, it makes them more heavier. More heavier means more gluey and difficult to break down in your gut. So instead of that, if you able to cook them, cook them means cook them with an, any oil. You want to use coconut oil, that's fine. Olive oil, you want to use, that's fine. But otherwise, if you are able to know what ghee is, ghee is very, very good. But for many of us, it is a poison. So won't go into that on a simple kind of discussion. But when you toast your grain with an oil, it makes them more lighter. And then you add warm water and then you use milk 
and if you are going to make it more specific now so that it really give you as food as medicine you can use two spices in the breakfast always irrespective of each season if you can use a quarter to half teaspoon of cinnamon and cardamom in your breakfast option reason why these spices because these spices are very specific to enhance your lymphatic system because in this first part of the day lymphatic system is what dominate because of the season consideration of the time of the day that time of the day we call it as in a cold and a bit moist which directly relate with the lymphatic system which is in a our cold and moist tissue in our body so to make it more compatible those two spices help to activate it that's the just simple consideration to talk about and if in the same way if someone feel that i whatever good dish i am eating it's always given a bit of heaviness and a bit of gargling or indigestion at the end on a simple note whatever dish you are eating whether it's your chicken fish or veggies or other thing or lentils legumes bean if you can squeeze fresh lemon fresh coriander and quarter to half teaspoon himalayan salt if someone know about black salt that's best but many of us sometimes don't know so himalayan salt which is again pink salt or many of the us call it that will help what is the purpose of doing that that help in the assimilation and absorption of your nutrient and normally one thing which we always uh, forget in our whole consideration that salt i'm talking about now taste salt is one of the six tastes which is very very responsible to break down the food that is why many people when they eat their food and lack salt sufficient amount of salt in their cooking or on top of their dish they are the one who always will have more gut issues than anyone else because in the gut you need moistness to do the digestion process so oil, this um, salt has the natural ability to change the permeability of the gut and bring more water moistness to help to do the digestion and that's where another consideration of ayurveda comes up that there should be an optimum amount of oiliness in your food whatever you are eating so those people who think that eating a low fat diet or just the raw diet will be giving me more healthy state they can just sit and look back that does it really has helped me because we don't need to always go with the stats or some researches or some studies we should use our body as a living lab and check whatever i am eating if whatever i am eating is healthy is optimum it should give me optimum health anyway but if it is not then there are some gaps and those gaps how i can fill that is where you need to look at towards the ayurvedic approach of uh, nutrition ayurvedic approach of uh, well being which can give you in a very clear answer to every question what you might have whether it relate with that uh, whether i can drink 3 uh, liter of water and get healthy whether i can just drink uh, eat uh, green veggies and still be healthy or not answer are always there with an ayurvedic practitioner when you follow them and they will teach you how to make your food as medicine it is very much possible very easy to achieve it's just a matter of us to trust those sciences which has been around and giving mankind that value of not just making how to make your six app but how you can make yourself physically mentally and emotionally in a more balanced state so that's for today and if any one of you will have any questions related with these you can uh, send us and we will be happy to answer that and uh, otherwise thanks everyone for joining those who have uh, taken their time to be with us